Well, greetings, Titans. This is Dave on the move. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity. I'm on my way back from uh, for a filming session in uh, Rugby Services. Um, the test on the grid serve there. That will be released shortly. Uh, but on the way back, I realised that I'm doing a lot of driving. I'm doing um, mostly on autopilot. And there's an awful lot of people don't uh, understand or don't have the same facilities or the same features in their particular vehicles. So I thought I'd just take a, a short video to uh, explain what I've got and how it works and show you it actually working in practice. So, um, so let's just go back to basics. Most cars nowadays have got cruise control. Uh, it's, it's a common feature, petrol, diesel, hybrids, EVs, everyone's got cruise control now. And whereas in the early days, uh, it was um, literally just set your speed and the car would do it. So if the car in front slowed down, you would run into the back of it. Uh, that quickly developed into adaptive, adaptive cruise control, where it will vary the speed based on the traffic flow. So at the moment, mine is set. I'm in cruise control. This is called autopilot. Um, uh, my ad adaptive cruise control is set at 70. I'm on a motorway. And uh, because of traffic, I'm doing 64. So it'll, it, it, it will adapt to the traffic. If the one in front speeds up to 70, mine will follow. If the one in front speeds up to 75, mine will speed up to 70 and then won't go any faster. I don't speed in this. Uh, so this is really good. If the one in front slows down, this will slow down. If the one in front stops in traffic, this will stop as well. Uh, this is becoming fairly standard. At one point, they didn't offer the stop facility. So uh, if you got below about 30 or 40 miles an hour, auto, uh, the uh, cruise control just cuts off, can't cope. Uh, but nowadays, a lot of cars, if you're in traffic on auto, cru auto uh, adaptive cruise control, uh, the car in front stops, yours will stop as well. And when the car in front starts, a number of them, you have to initiate it, button or pedal or something. But so many cars these days, this one, it will start on its own. You don't need to touch anything. So great in stop-start traffic. They, um, they, they literally just um, do whatever the traffic's doing. Uh, so this is fairly standard. Uh, adaptive cruise control, nothing new. This is a very sophisticated one. It is better than many. Uh, what this has is uh, speed sign recognition uh, and control. Now, a lot of cruise control will, uh, if you've got a camera, will spot the road signs for speed and they will alert you to what the speed limit is. This one goes one further and this will change the adaptive cruise control speed limit to match it. For example, if I'm driving along at 70 uh, on the motorway, cruise control set at 70, I'm actually doing 70. And then up ahead, there's some roadworks and they've got the big 50 signs at the side of the road. This will show that the speed limit has changed down to 50 and it will slow down the car to 50. I don't have to do anything, don't have to touch anything. It, it adapts, it does it. And then at the end of the road works where it shows the de-restricted signs, this will speed back up to 70 if the road is clear. So this is a little bit more sophisticated. What it does mean is that the car will, if it's all working, will always do the speed limit, no more. Uh, so if you are uh, a little bit distracted when you're driving manually and you don't see the 50 mile an hour signs uh, or you're looking somewhere else and you forget you don't notice them uh, it's easy to be speeding with this the camera's always watching so if you do go through a speed limit uh, a speed uh, control sign it will automatically change so it helps in that way because uh, i do a lot of driving i don't want to get a speeding ticket and get points on the license or lose my license so uh, it just makes it much easier for me so that's the cruise control. Uh, this is quite a sophisticated one, works brilliantly. Uh, this also has, um, oh, by the way, that means, so with the adaptive cruise control and the speed reaction, it means I don't use my feet anymore. My feet are down there, they're ready to take over uh, because this is level three, uh, level two. Um, uh, driver assist feature and that means I have to be available, I have to be watching the road, have to be ready to take over at any time. Uh, so that's the, so I, I, I find on, on motorway journeys, certainly motorway journeys, I, I, I very rarely use my feet. 
Uh, they're, they're always there handy just in case I have to do anything. But if the one in front crashes and stops stationary, uh, this will slam the brakes on for me. I don't have to do anything. Uh, so it just means I don't have to hold my foot on the accelerator pedal at the same angle for two, three, four, five hours at a time. That's all guaranteed to give you cramp or muscle troubles. So that's that. Now the next move on was uh, lane control. This is uh, ALKS systems, automatic lane keeping. Uh, and uh, because cars got camera, most cars got cameras nowadays, uh, they can actually see the white lines on motorways that are usually fairly clearly marked. And all this does is it's got a electric motor control of the steering and it means that uh, the camera looks and it places me bang in the middle of a lane. So automatic lane keeping means I don't have to worry about drifting lanes or whatever it is. Um, uh, it means I'm nearly always bang in the middle of the lane and um, managing the speed as well. So this is in effect full self-driving now. I don't have to do anything. <coughs> You will see me touching the wheel from time to time. This is a safety feature. Um, I know there are fixes out there for stop having to do this, but to me, why do you have a safety feature and then you, you go and override it? It's just lunacy. So, uh, sorry, but I disagree with those totally. Uh, this one, if I don't touch the wheel every so often, then this will disengage. It gives me several warnings first, but then ultimately it just disengages. It's not full self-driving, and it's not trying to kid you it is. Other systems, they have eye recognition, um, and there'll be a little camera uh, near the rearview mirror, and it'll look at your eyes, and it can tell where you're looking at. And if you're not looking at the road, uh, it will disengage the cruise control as well. So it's all designed to say this is not full self-driving, this is just assisted driving, particularly on motorways, uh, but you do have to keep telling it that you're here, uh, either by looking at it or by touching the wheel every so often. <clears throat> so that's that. In addition to, um, to the uh, automatic lane keeping, this car, and this is an eight, uh, coming up a nine-year-old car now, this has automatic lane change for overtaking. So if I'm going along, car in front going a bit slow and I need to change lanes, all I need to do is tell it. So I do that with the indicator. I tell it I want to turn. I've got hands off now. And what the car does is it switches lanes, checks it's clear, checks the blind spot, tells me it's clear, and only if it's clear will it pull out. It's now in the outside lane. Uh, driving quite happily and if I want to go back by the way I'm keeping an eye on traffic I'm not doing anything that's going to affect anyone so if I want to go back now the middle lane's clear I just tell it on the indicators to go back the later Teslas by the way they cancel the indicators for you automatically so that's just one more one more chore uh, right the car slammed its brakes on lorry was looking like it was going to pull out uh, he, st he drifted over the line the car recognized it and put the brakes on. I haven't touched the brakes. Uh, then it realized it wasn't coming over the line, it's back up to 70. So this is quite a sophisticated system and it is um, right, really old technology at the moment. Full self-driving is another league altogether. It's totally different league, totally different technology. Um, this car, and I knew when I bought it, will never do full self-drive. Uh, to do full self-drive, you need a lot more cameras than this one has got. Uh, this was the early days. Uh, you need a much better computer than this one's got, and you need a much better uh, level of technology. So this is one, it, it does auto um, autopilot, um, which is all I need. Um, it would be nice, I suppose, but not worth the money to go for full self-driving, but it, it's not for me. The reason it's not for me is that most of my driving is like this motorway, I'll drive somewhere, it'll be dual carriageway. These will drive quite happily, autopilot dual carriageway, and on A roads as well, and even on B roads. Um, the restriction really comes with the white lines. Once you lose the white lines, the, the car has to work much harder to do the automatic lane keeping system. Now, it does it, uh, but it's not one I would trust. Um, so, if you're on an A road and you've got a curb on one side and a white line down the middle of the road, uh, absolutely happy. It'll drive along on an A road really happily, uh, keeping the center of the lane, no trouble at all. <coughs> uh, 
if the road narrows and you lose the white line in the middle, uh, this one really starts to struggle and it won't do it. It'll often just disengage um, the autopilot. Unless there's a car in front of me. Now, if there's a car in front of me, it will actually latch onto that and it will follow it on this auto cruise, um, or adaptive auto cruise, and it will stay the same distance and everything else. And even though there are no white lines, it's, it will just follow the car in front. And that's hilarious on some occasions where a car is pulled off down a little, small, small little lane or into a private drive and this one tries to follow it. So it's, it's not ideal. So for longer distances, for the big A roads, the dual carriageways and motorways, this is absolutely all I need. It is. So I would say probably 70-80% of all my driving now is done on autopilot. It's just so easy. I really don't have to think about it. It's much safer than me. <clears throat> One thing people don't realise is that if you are going to overtake and you have to look in your blind spot, you're not looking forward. That's a potential danger if something happened in front of you, you're not looking at it. If you look in your mirror, you're not looking forward. Uh, with autopilot, you can look anywhere you want and the car's always looking forward for you. So it is actually safer in that respect. It will spot things like the lorry just back there. Uh, I didn't know why it was braking, but when I looked, there was a lorry which was drifting over the, uh, over the white lines uh, and the car recognized it could come over into my lane, in which case I would have to slam the brakes on. So. Uh, it slowed down when it saw the lorry was actually going back into its lane. Uh, it speeded back up to 70 mile an hour. So about 70-80% of all my driving now is, is, is on autopilot. Around town I don't mind driving. Um, it's a bit of a hassle turning it on and off all the time. So around town I tend to drive it myself. On the motorways, dual carriageways, longer journeys, A roads, I tend to use autopilot. Um, autopilot at... Um, on, a, on an A road, uh, it's quite interesting because it can't react to traffic lights. That's full self-driving. Um, well, no, I, I tell a lie. The autopilot won't, my version of autopilot won't uh, respond to traffic lights. So if it comes to a traffic light, knows it's there, uh, I can see the color of it, it won't stop. And that's because this doesn't have that facility. So if I'm driving on an A road and there are regular traffic lights, I have to take over at each of those junctions. So it will drive between the traffic lights, approaching traffic lights. I just take over, get through the traffic lights, accelerate away, put it back into autopilot and away we go again. Unless there's a car in front of me. And this is the interesting one. This is where you get almost full self-driving. If there's a car in front of me and we are both approaching a set of traffic lights and they turn red, the car in front of me, hopefully, will stop on a red light. And if it does, my car will stop behind it. I don't have to do anything, don't have to touch anything. When that car sees a light change to green and goes, mine will set off as well. And that means that mine effectively can actually drive, um, pretty much full self-drive, even on an A road, even though my car technically can't do that, it just follows the car in front. It does give me a problem still on roundabouts, uh, uh, as the car in front will slow down for a roundabout, mine will slow down as well, but mine can't manoeuvre around a roundabout, uh, it just won't do it. Uh, it will try and accelerate back up to full speed as if the roundabout wasn't there, which again, it's fun on occasions. Um, so it will slow down for a roundabout. I take over for the roundabout, drive around the roundabout, press autopilot, away we go again. So about 70-80% of all my driving is on um, autopilot and it's absolutely perfect for me. If it did uh, offer full self-driving, I don't think I'd actually spend the money to get full self-driving. It's currently around about £6,000. Uh, it's an awful lot of money for just 10 or 20% of my driving where it could take over. For other people, if you're a rep on the road and your car can drive itself all the way door to door, uh, you can sit in the back, you can do paperwork, you can watch videos, you can go to sleep. Uh, that, that would be a real use for it. It could extend your working ability. Uh, anyhow, so that's, uh, that's where we are on this car. Uh, it's very good. It does everything I want. It's got regular updates. In fact, I've got an update at the moment. It says, um, yeah, there's an update available for me. Can't do it at the moment while I'm driving. Um, it uh, doesn't allow it. You've got to be in park for it to do it. 
Um, there's one other thing as well which I would like to mention, and that is that like all computers, every so often, they seem to get a little bit bogged down and they slow down and they become less responsive. And what most of us do at some point or other is just do a reboot. Uh, that reboot uh, on a mobile phone, you just turn it off, wait 30 seconds, turn it back on, it reboots, clears out all the temporary memory and all, all the rubbish that's built up, uh, and it speeds it up a bit. Same with tablets, same with uh, desktop computers and uh, all computers. And this is full computer, um, so this is no different. So every so often, this uh, also benefits from a reboot. I've never had it freeze. It just gets a real, it gets really slow, uh, a bit less responsive. And so what I do every so often, if I do notice it's starting to get slow, I will just uh, do a reboot. And the nice thing about this, I can do a reboot while I'm driving. So to reboot this one, and I'll do it at the moment, um, you're not gonna see this, so what I'm gonna do is just talk you through it. So at the moment, I've got my navigation screen here, I've got my driver display in front of me, uh, conditioning's on, radio's off, everything's fine. Uh, I'm in autopilot. So to reboot this one, I've got two buttons here uh, on the steering wheel, and if I hold those two down, um, and the screen will go blank. There we go, screen's gone blank. Now the driver display in front of me carries on. This is still working, so I can see my speed. I'm still in autopilot, so it's still driving. My main screen, screen now is totally black, so it's doing a reboot behind. So Tesla on this model allow me to carry on driving perfectly happily, and all I've lost at this point is the main display. So what will happen now, I'll get all sorts of warning lights coming up. This one just got one, set headlights to auto. Um, it, it's things switch on and off in the background. Uh, this one says apply for small force to the steering wheel. Um, and very soon what I'm gonna lose is the air conditioning. The air conditioning switches off and also does a reboot. That's the first thing I notice, it's nice and cool. I like my car cool at the moment. Uh, but this one, when you do a reboot, uh, oh, there's got logo coming up now. So it's, it's not a fast reboot, this one. So the Tesla logo's up, so it's starting to reboot. But when the air, oh, the air conditioner, I can feel it, it's gone off, the heating's on. Um, so I know it's rebooting now. Um, and in another 20, 30, 40 seconds, the screen will come back on. Uh, it will be fully refreshed and much more responsive. Now, a lot of cars won't do this. You can't do this while you're driving. You have to be stopped in park. Uh, but the Teslas know if your screen freezes while you're driving, just do a reset. All I've lost is the uh, sat-nav uh, and the main screen, which gives me a few functions. But I can still operate wipers, headlights, everything else. I can still stop, change gear, put it in park. It's still driving on autopilot. Uh, so it's a really easy system, this one, in, uh, to do a reboot. This is real time, uh, hasn't rebooted yet. I say it's not the fastest. This is one of the reasons why it won't ever do full self-drive. The, the computer processor on this is just so old, it's nine years old. Uh, and if you had a nine year old phone, it would not perform the same as a new one. So I've got the screen back on now. It's showing I can choose the radio if I want to. Hasn't come, come up with the sat nav yet. Oh, there we go. I've now got the picture. It's picked me up again on the motorway and we're back in business. So I've got everything in front of me. It's all changed. Uh, so it's all refreshed. And that's a, a full reboot on the onboard computer while driving along 70 mile an hour in autopilot. Anyway, that's it for now. That's all I'm doing. So thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, let me know. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment. If you'd like to see more, press the subscribe uh, so we notify you when we release videos. And for anyone who would like to support the channel um, financially, uh, we have our Patreon membership. Huge thank you to everyone uh, who is a Patreon member. You make such a difference to the channel. And also a big thank you. Uh, star of this month is Darren. Thank you very much, Darren. You've been a, a, a member for an awful long time and you've just upgraded your membership. So thank you very much for what you're doing for the channel. I'm Dave. Thanks very much.